Preference over an infinite set. Previously, we looked at Jane, who faced a set of three objects. We gave an example of Jane's preference over this set of objects. Her preference was simply a complete specification or description of her pairwise preferences over each possible pair of objects from the set. So in this case, we specified that she strictly preferred dog to egg, strictly preferred dog to fish, and was indifferent between egg and fish. So now let's suppose that instead of just having a set of three objects, we now throw in an additional object. We throw in a gorilla also. So now there's a set of four objects. How might we specify Jane's preference over this set of four objects? Well, as before, we just need to specify Jane's pairwise preference over every possible pair of objects. So now with four objects, there are going to be six possible pairs of objects. We have dog and egg, dog and fish, egg and fish, dog and gorilla, egg and gorilla, and fish and gorilla. So there are six possible pairs of objects. So to specify Jane's preference, we need to specify her pairwise preferences over each of these possible pairs of objects. So we see that with four objects, we need to make six statements in order to fully specify Jane's preference. So this is a bit messier, but it's conceptually no more difficult. And more generally, for any finite set of objects, there's not going to be any problem stating Jane's preference. It might be tedious, but conceptually, all we need to do is to simply specify her pairwise preferences over every possible pair of objects. Let's now return to our old friend Chris, whom we recall had the problem of deciding how many apples and how many bananas to buy. Recall also that we then reformulated the consumer's problem as that of choosing some feasible consumption bundle. That is to say, some particular point in the red shader area shown here, which we also call the budget set. But then we say, well, this set is infinitely big. So how are we going to go about choosing? And then we say, oh, this is where preferences come into play. So now we'd like to add one more ingredient to the story of Chris the consumer. We'd like to endow Chris with a preference over the set of all possible consumption bundles. That is to say, this entire blue shaded area shown here, going to infinity apples and infinity bananas. So previously, when we talked about preference, we had always been talking about preference over finite sets. But now, the problem here is that this particular set is an infinite set. So how are we going to go about specifying Chris's preference over this infinite set? Well, let's look at an example of a preference over the set of all possible bundles. To state this example, I'm going to have Chris follow two rules. The first rule is this, more is better. In other words, whenever Chris has one more apple, he's strictly better off than before. And whenever he has one more banana, he's also strictly better off than before. The second rule is this, Chris is always indifferent about exchanging one apple for one banana. In other words, whenever you take away from him one apple and give him one additional banana, he's exactly as happy as he was before. Similarly, if you take away from him one banana and give him one apple. Now, I claim that using these two rules alone, we have fully specified Chris's pairwise preferences over all possible pairs of consumption bundles. This may seem a little unbelievable, so let's look at a few examples of pairs of bundles. The first example is this. Let's compare the bundle 10 apples, 3 bananas, to the bundle 5 apples and 2 bananas. Notice that the first bundle has strictly more apples than the second bundle and it also has strictly more bananas than the second bundle. And so by rule 1, obviously the first bundle is strictly preferred to the second bundle. Let's look at a second example of a possible pair of bundles. The first bundle will be as before, 10 apples and 3 bananas. The second bundle will be 5 apples and 3 bananas. So this time, the first bundle has just as many bananas as the second bundle. But again, it has strictly more apples than the second bundle. Hence, going by rule 1, more is better, the first bundle is strictly preferred to the second bundle. Now let's look at a last example. This example will be trickier. In the first bundle, we'll have 7 apples and 2 bananas. In the second bundle, we'll have 5 apples and 3 bananas. Is one bundle strictly better than the other? Or is Chris indifferent between the two of them? Well, this time it's a bit trickier because the first bundle has strictly more apples than the second bundle. However, the second bundle has strictly more bananas than the first bundle. So going by just rule 1 alone, we will be unable to say which bundle Chris prefers or whether he's indifferent between these two bundles. However, if we use rule 2 also, we'll be able to figure out what Chris's pairwise preference over these two bundles is. I'm going to stick between these two bundles a middle bundle, 6 apples, 3 bananas. I'm going to compare first the left bundle with the middle bundle. Notice that going from the left bundle to the middle bundle, what we are doing here is taking away from Chris one apple and giving him one additional banana. So by rule 2, Chris has to be indifferent between the left bundle and the middle bundle. Now let's compare the middle bundle with the right bundle. This time it's easy. The middle bundle has just as many bananas as the right bundle, but it has strictly more apples than the right bundle. Therefore, by rule 1, the middle bundle is strictly preferred to the right bundle. 
And now if we use transitivity, we can infer that the left bundle is strictly preferred to the right bundle. So what we've just done is look at three examples of pairs of bundles. Using the two rules just stated, we managed to figure out for each of these examples which bundle Chris prefers exactly. And it's going to turn out that given just these two rules alone, we are always going to be able to figure out given any two bundles, whether Chris strictly prefers one to the other or whether he's indifferent between the two of them. In fact, the two rules given here can be boiled down into something much more concise. It can be summarized as follows. Chris's preference is simply to maximize the number of fruit that he has. The next thing we are going to do is to try to figure out how we can depict this example of Chris's preference on our usual graph. It turns out that this can be done by constructing indifference curves, and this is exactly what we'll do in the next video.